I want to share with you something I think is pretty cool. When you hear this sound, or this sound, or this sound, or this sound, what instrument do you think that might come from? Well, believe it or not, all of them except the, the last one there actually came from different frame drums in my studio. This right here is actually from this drum here, I believe. And the way that I made that sound was by using an infrared microphone switch. This is by OptiGate. And this is the PB-05. I actually used the PB-05M, which is mute, f to make these sounds. What I did was hit the drum. I can't remember if I used my finger, my hand, or if I used a mallet. And I hit the sound, then stepped in front of the microphone causing the, the infrared switch, saw, it detects when something's in front of it and turns the microphone on. And so I hit the drum, then put the drum over it, turning the mic on, and what essentially happened was it just captured the tone and not the attack, the actual hit of my finger or hand or mallet on the drum. And that's what essentially makes it sound more like a drum as you notice that attack the actual hitting of the surface of the drum. So what I did was hit it, then the mic goes on because it's in front of it and it just captured the tone. That's it. It's all tone, making it sound more like a synthesizer. So what I was doing is using these OptiGate switches to create synth sounds, like organic synthesizer sounds, or which, I mean, if it's old school synthesizer, I guess it would be organic anyways, using electronic sounds anyways. I used the OptiGate switches to create these different synthesizer type sounds in real time and then put them in my drum machine so that I could play them. Almost like a keyboard synth. The company OptiGate sent me a message online asking if I could come up with a way to use these switches in a studio application. Now they're generally used live to, to clean sound up on stage. So if someone's singing and then they put the mic over here and it doesn't detect that there's by a body, it doesn't detect the skin, then it turns the mic off. So now you're only using it depending on the range that you can set it because you can set the range from two inches to four feet. The, and the infrared switch is right here. This basically goes between the back of the microphone and then the XLR cable right here. And on the PBO5 version M and D, there is a infrared switch in line. So if it's facing whatever it's facing, that infrared light is going towards them, going towards here and sensing something in front of the microphone, hence turning it on or not in front of the mic and now either ducking it, leaving a little bit of sound or muting it. And the PB-07 is for a gooseneck podium lectern type mic where instead of the infrared being here, the infrared switch, let me grab my, oh, there it is. Instead of being in front. On this one, the PB-07, the infrared is on the front here. So if as soon as something's in front of it, then it detects it and it turns on. And that usually there'll be a cable here and a gooseneck and then you, you can kind of make the microphone attached to you. I actually used this one to make those sounds because I used my body to detect when I wanted to, for the switch to detect, to turn on. I used my body to decide when I wanted the mic to come on and how much of the tone I wanted to get. Now you don't need an OptiGate to do this. You could record the drum and then just go into your recording software and cut off the very beginning, that attack, that part where you hit the drum and just get the tone of the drum. And But this is a fun way to, to record those sounds in real time. And it could be a time saver to do this type of uh, activity, experiment, this type of recording, this creative recording process, <laughs> it, it, instead of going back and making all those sounds. Now, I, I was able to just pick up any drum I wanted really quick, hit it, record that sound, go to the next one, hit it, turn it on with my body, make it, make go to the next one. V very quickly, I was able to record one, two, three, four, five, six different sounds to put into, inside my drum machine. Another possible application, practical application that you can use with the switch is if you're a 
a multi-percussionist and you're adding some percussion effects in the studio, chimes, shakers, different percussion effects. I like to call that ambient percussion. You can Sometimes when you record, you get all these chair squeaks or you pick up the instrument and put it down, you get these extraneous extra sounds that you may or may not want in the recording. Let's say on one track, you do the 30 different sounds and you want all of them and the track ha is pretty quiet in between and and for whatever reason, something fell to the ground or this or that, uh, and you got that extra sound, this could be a time saver where you use a little bit of choreography where you can just adjust the, the, the switch that's recording the percussion effects. You can have your body in the way of it and play those. And then when you're done, you just kind of step to the side of the mic, put it down on a percussion tray and do the next one. And so now you're using, it's like having an extra hand basically in the studio. Haven't tried that yet, but it was in my mind to try that and I think it could be a really cool trick. I'll explain a little bit of how this switch works. So here I have the Dash 7 and as you can see, the microphone is pointing straight up. If this was, and I'm looking for my other switch, okay. If this was on the Dash 05 and the other ones, then instead of this, ra this radar, this infrared, you can see the lights here, and I could try to make it turn on and come back off. I don't know if you can see that light. But if it was the Dash 5, the other ones, then this light would not be facing out like that. It would actually be in line facing the actual microphone. So I would have it like normal, like if you're singing and hold a microphone like that. This one is for the lectern, and the reason is because what I did was use my I used my body basically and I'll show you how how I did that so I came over on the side so now the microphone this one right here is not on because it needs to be in front all right so nothing's on so if I go like this with this microphone I'll turn my vocal mic off and now and then this is off so watch you'll hear nothing all right now turn my mic I'll turn it off again and now I'll stand in front of it. There you go, you can hear me hitting the drum there. Now, so the way that I made the tone and, and not just the actual articulation is come over here, hit the drum, step in front of it, and then get it closer to the drum. So as soon as my body comes in front of it, it switches the mic on and then I decide how much of the volume I want by getting the drum closer to the mic or taking it away. So I could just come over here and step in front of it and just grab the tone. But what I was doing was also grabbing, grabbing the tone and the tone is dying right away because it is a drum. Doom. So I hit the drum and got it as close as I could to the mic. So that does create a, a bit of a crescendo. It causes, so, so a little, using the dynamics, whoom. but since it's decaying so fast, it's actually just capturing the, you know, the volume the, as loud as I want it to, to be. I kind of want to get as much of that volume as possible. So that's pretty cool. It's basically turning the mic on and off for me because I don't want later on to get the sound of the actual hit, the beginning. I just want, I want it to be smooth. If you, if you didn't hear someone hit the drum, but you just heard the tone, it would kind of be like the difference between on a piano, let me let me back up there. On a piano, if you've ever seen the inside of it, then you'll know there's little hammers and there's felts on those hammers and they hit tuned strings within the piano. And based on this piano's construction, we say that it's, it has a darker tone, a brighter tone. Some pianos have a, a tone where you, you can get a little more staccato, right? And the, the, the thickness of that felt uh, I'm not a piano expert, so I may be a little off here, but the thickness of the felt hitting that string is going to cause you to hear more attack. Same thing if you think about bringing it back to other other percussion, like the drum set, the bass drum and bass drum beaters. Uh, so on a kick drum, 
the, the depending on the type of beater that you use on the foot pedal is going to get you more attack or a softer attack if you use felt if you use plastic if you use a harder felt you can use an old school woolly beater we call them those are like the uh the beaters that were used a long time ago it has kind of a sheepskin type of look and it's thicker uh, then that's going to change the sound. So essentially, I could do that with this drum. I could use a fur, furry beater, a sheepskin type mallet, a softer mallet. This is actually a mallet made of uh, some type of hemp organic material, and it's softer, and it doesn't have as much of the tackiness, the hardness. So it is a softer hit. You don't hear the hit as much, but you still hear that initial attack. And I just want the... I just want the so that's what I used how I did it basically by using my body right in front of it so this is pretty cool so for me what this means is basically I'm using the microphone or the switch as an assistant I'm using my body or I'm using my hand engaging uh, getting all of that so it's fun to experiment it's a very tactile way for me to experiment and create sounds in the studio and then it saves me some time later also behind me I have some percussion instruments that sometimes I record and create percussion effects on different tracks when people send uh, me their their songs in the studio I record and sometimes you know you're taking something off of a stand or you put it down and you might get that that sound there when you put something down or the tail end you might have to try to use your hand it's a it's a skill set you need as a percussionist to try to manipulate the, the end of the sound and the beginning of the sound the way you want but also this can be another tool that if i don't have a felt or a soft way to to allow you know when i'm putting the instrument down and i'm finished or hanging it back up as soon as i step away that microphone might be off so i can record I'm done with that sound, I step away, the microphone is then off, and then I can just put the instrument down because the microphone's off, it's not going to capture that. That's going to save me time later on. So there's a bunch of those type of creative things that can be used. It's it's like a gate, It's uh, 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 and more than a gate, it's basically turning the mic on and off so I don't have to have those sounds. I'm ducking the volume and I'm completely muting it. So really fun. Uh, ways to create some music in the different sounds in the studio. What I'm going to do now is actually create something and share it with you. And I am going to try to create something industrial, but with tone using all percussion. So I'm going to create a tune with this switch and the, uh, the frame drums, the tones that I made, but I'm going to use all percussion. I'm going to use this a break drum. I'm going to use wrenches. So it'll be a mixture of these tones that I use creating the OptiGate switch and sound design. Dog bone wrenches, brake drums, uh, super ball, and vacuum cleaner sounds, and all of that, and create a, a somewhat of a cinematic type uh, track. And then I'll also create an actual loop and go into a groove. So it'll be just kind of like sounds, ethereal sound at first, and then we'll go into an actual groove with all of that. And what I think is uh, will be a cool experiment is that I will be just using percussion, but it'll have a lot of melody as well.
Thanks everyone for watching. If you're interested in the OptiGate mic switch, you can use my promo code for a discount on the OptiGate mic switch. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May God give you peace and I'll see you soon.